I have, from the questions that have come across, there are many that relate to the companies. And with your intelligence, allow me to start from there. Senator Cheriot, Senator from Marraquet, and several senators have asked why I listed 21 com companies and why I said I did not have an interest in some of them. Number one, I think it is important for us to understand the context within which we are operating. I am not an investigator. And the law under Article 94, Article 95, does not make a member of parliament, the National Assembly or Senate, an investigator. What I'm required to do is to establish a prima facie case, to establish that what is happening is outside the requirements of the law. And having been in this country and with a lot of enthusiasm in matters governance, I also know that this Senate has an opportunity to consider the impeachment of the late Nderito Gashagwa. And in that impeachment, if because this is a house of record, you will realize that most of the companies that have listed were also complained about by the County Assembly of Nyeri during the impeachment of Governor Derito Eshagwa. And the complaint was specifically that there was a brother to the late governor, and the brother is one Rigathi Gashagwa, who was doing all the business in Nyeri County. And from that basis, therefore, I needed to expound to find out what these companies that had been complained about during that impeachment, what these companies that had been complained about in the Esther Minor decision in terms of money laundering had to do with the Deputy President and the things that I'm alleging against him. And it is on that basis that I listed these companies. I want to invite members of this Senate to also know that in doing this, it is not just about the direct evidence. It is also about the circumstantial evidence. It's also about the circumstances that led to where we are. That there are companies that were complained about doing business in Nyeri County. It came to this Senate. That the same companies were complained about doing money laundering and a decision of the High Court by Justice Maina has been tabled before you. And today, we are complaining that the same companies are, he are helping to do corruption and money laundering. And that's the reason why we bring those companies. Please notice that in an impeachment, because I've been asked about threshold, and I know you know about it, my work here is not to prove criminal liability. It is not to prove beyond reasonable doubt. My work here is not <clears throat> to prove civil liability, but to show political responsibility. And I have been able to do that. In terms of Vipingo Ridge, the question I want to invite honorable senators, and I, want, I request that you listen to me. I was told yesterday that uh, Vipingo Ridge, the two sons of His Excellency the Deputy President are mere directors, and that the shares are owned by the estate of the late Derito Gashagwa. But then you ask yourself, all of you here, you have children, why would my, why would my, the, my brother's children own my estate and not my children? Why would my brother's children be the ones who are directors in my estate and not my own children? If you die today, will your children be the ones being directors of your properties or it is the children of your brothers? Don't you see this is suspicious? It is obviously suspicious. Number two in law, and I want to challenge anyone. As an estate, what is an estate? An estate is the totality of your belongings. So can an estate own an estate? It is administrators. We would have expected that the executors in the estate who are named in the will are the ones who would have been named in the shareholding. And we know all these trick games that are being played around to hide ownership. And that, because I talked about circumstantial evidence, that is to be compared with the affidavit of Mr. Jomo, in terms of how Jomo was approached to be proxy in buying the property, and how Jahenda, the question that has been asked, is the one operating the accounts. And we have been able to show that the same Jahenda, the same lady who works at the DP's office, is the same person 
who is the manager at the hotel and is the one who is operating the accounts. So I invite you to see the web of secrecy, the web of conspiracy, it is a web. And this is why I said these are white collar crimes, they are done by intelligent people. Sometimes it becomes very difficult to get direct evidence, but in the totality of the circumstances, it points to money laundering and corruption. Let me now go to Senator Fornandi, my good friend, Senator Cherange. Thank you very much for the Bible verse. I will keep on reading it, and every time I read it, I will remember you. 5.2 billion wealth. Did I ask for the wealth declaration? I, I have said here yeah, I was not in an investigation journey. I was doing my role under the law to establish a prima facie case. And the last I know, in terms of public declaration, because this has also been asked, the deputy president during the presidential debate as a candidate for election did declare that it was worth 800 million shillings. I have listed companies, I have listed suspicious transactions that lead me to the conclusion that it is now worth 5.2 billion shillings. The law on unexplained assets, because this is important, the law on unexplained assets is such that you are, you are asked, you own this. Please tell us how you acquired it. Because as far as we know, your legitimate income cannot support this. That is what I have done. I have listed properties that I have laid evidence that they are either directly or indirectly owned by the deputy president. It is upon him, and this law is established. It is upon him to tell us where he got money to buy those properties because in as far as we know, his legitimate sources of income do not support that income. Senator Kenya, thank you for the question. Treetop Hotel is owned by KWS and therefore is a public institution. The expectation at law is that it should be, if it was to be leased, that needed to follow the Public Procurement and Disposal Act. And therefore would have expected an advertisement a competitive process to leading to its acquisition and leasing to a private person. There is no evidence that that was done, in, and that's why I allege and I approved that the deputy president used his office to influence the acquiring of Treetops Hotel, abuse of office. Whether we have had the opportunity to discuss with the children and the widows of uh, the late Nerito Gashagua, please allow me not to comment on that because there are requests also, as I said yesterday, that uh, we keep certain matters that come to our knowledge during this process in secrecy. Senator for Samburu, the necessity of including the companies, <clears throat> I have said, the children of uh, the, Rito, the children of Rigadi Gashagwa, they are in, I think one is in his early 30s, the other one is in his late 20s. Whether there is an age limit for somebody to obtain a loan of 700 million, no, there isn't an age limit, but the guess, yours and mine, how many children of that age in the Republic of Kenya would have security enough to secure a loan of 600 million? Because to secure a loan of 600 million, the bankers tell us that uh, you have to place property probably that is 10 times more in value than that. When did they acquire that property? Number two, it is not our evidence, and this is important for me to clarify, that uh, Abadea's Safari Lodges was acquired through a loan. It is an explanation that we have discounted. He said that they obtained a loan of 600 million, but the only document that was produced is an offer letter for the loan. There is no evidence to show that the loan was granted. There is no evidence to show any charge on that loan. And therefore, it is our contention that that explanation is not conclusive. That explanation cannot, cannot, cannot suffice. And therefore, 
it goes back to the deputy president to tell us where he got the 535 million, where he got the 143 million to buy those properties because the loan is not substantiated. Senator, in terms of uh, Olive Gardens, we have been able to show Julian Jaenda, the one managing the hotel and the one working in the DP's office, is one and the same person. Jomo, we bought the hotel on a promise that the deputy president, the truth of the matter is that Conclude, jo uh, Mutushi, Jomo bought the hotel two minutes, two minutes to as a proxy for the deputy president. Whether, what problem do we have with refurbishment at the office of the deputy president? We do not have a problem with the tender. We have a problem with the priorities. Kenyans today, and the deputy president is talking about it, are crying about services. Is it a priority to renovate the office, or is it a priority to give water to the people of Kibwezi? Uh, Vipingo Beach, I have explained whether you would bequeath your wealth to your children or to the children of your brother. Senator of Meru, the property, there is no, there is an admission by, from the response by the DP that he actually owns a property in Meru, so I do not need to belabor that point. That it, he has already admitted he owns a property in Meru, but he says he got a loan from one of the local circles. He has not produced evidence for that loan. And therefore, to my contention, that issue is already proved. In terms of uh, the NIS address in Mombasa and why we complain about it, imagine, imagine, and I do not want to imagine that, you, somebody was a member of Al-Shabaab, and the deputy president, none other than the, the deputy president, stood up and said our intelligence system has collapsed. Wouldn't that be the right time to strike? That is the risk that the country faced by that particular announcement.